The community of faith is designed by God to dwell in unity. When Christ was getting ready to leave his disciples, he prayed. In John 17, 20 through 23, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. We know that there are absolutely no division or separation in the Godhead. The triune God subsist in substance as fully one. This is the Lord's desire for the church and even for the world. The world fights against this unity every chance they get. The vileness of society is seen throughout history and comes down to disunity. There is a clear rebellion of the earth dwellers against God's call for unity that we see in the world today. These ills in the world are the result of deviation from God's plan for us. Romans 1 28 through 30 points out that, that the world is so prone because it rejected the knowledge of God. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, every greed and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. We must be careful of all the categories of people outlined in the text above. Gossips, slanderers, and God-haters. Paul was greatly concerned about the church in Corinth for the same reasons. He was afraid that they would go against God's plans and not live in the unity that the Spirit seeks to create in the church of Christ. For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not find me as you want me to be. I fear that there may be discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. 2 Corinthians 12 20. Like before, he pulls slander, arrogance, selfishness, disorder, and gossip into the vices that divide. What is gossip and why is it so dangerous? In defining the term primarily from a biblical perspective, we will have to treat it as a verb and a noun. From the noun form, we are told that this is someone who bears tales and who slanders. Strong's exhaustive concordance says, a gossip is a scandal monger as traveling about, slander, carrying tales, tale bearer. This is someone who does not sit still, but goes around from house to house and from town to town spewing slander. The verb form pretty much gives a similar definition, but taken from the passage in 2 Corinthians, it adds the sphere of secrecy. Helps words. Study states properly a whispering to quietly spread malicious gossip, whispering that launches 
secret attacks on a person's character. As we explore the dangers of gossip, we must keep these definitions and individuals in mind. A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Proverbs 11:13. One of the primary dangers of gossiping and a gossip is that it will ruin confidence and confidentiality. If people cannot trust, they will not seek us out for counsel or help when they are facing struggles in life. The Bible calls us as a community of faith to bear one another burdens and even to confess our sins one to another. When that confidence is ruined, each person will hoard their struggles and continue to struggle in secrecy. This is not the way we are called to live. We must be willing to hold a person's cry for help in confidence. It is a subtle but very dangerous practice, and we may think that we are not hurting those we gossip about, but with that trust that is needed to foster wholesome relationships in the body of Christ. A perverse man sows strife, and a whisperer separates the best of friends. Proverbs 16, 28. Piper writes, Gossip breeds dissension and distrust, destroying communities and friendships. When we gossip, we move farther away from the path Jesus Christ laid before us. We must do everything to live in the fellowship of friendship within the church. Gossip is a sure way to sow discord among the brethren. We need to be extremely vigilant when it comes to gossip because it can seem very innocent. After all, what harm could a little whispering do? We must always think to ourselves, am I the person? Matthew Poole states, who secretly carries tales from one to another, publishing those evil words and actions which they should conceal and detracting from their good actions and perverting such as are innocent with their false constructions. If we are doing this, we will estrange people who are brought together for the purposes of God. Some commentators go even deeper and state that gossip alienates one leader from another or from his army. As the people of God, we will not successfully fight against our greatest enemy, the devil, when we are divided as friends. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out, and where there is no talebearer, strife ceases. Proverbs 26, 20. This is connected to the point above, because if we have ever had a disagreement with a friend, we can understand the implications of leaving it between each other. The minute one of you takes it outside the friendship and begins to gossip about it and to others, the quarrel gets some complicated and is prolonged. When we add gossip to a quarrel, it is like pressing the accelerator pedal on a car that is headed over a precipice. The end of those on board is certain. One of the things I would like us to consider here as well is that the quarrel is fueled not by us looking at our part in it and recounting that, but what we do is to recount the flaws of the next person. Gossip keeps us from looking within and seeing our flaws. It always highlights the mistakes of others and makes us out to be the heroes. We must avoid jumping at opportunities to speak about a person's flaws. The most deadly danger about gossip is that it puts us out of the favor of God. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 states, 
These six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. God hates discord, and he arbors the systems that perpetuate the discord. This is Satan's arena. We as believers must be conscious of the words we say. Proverbs 10, 18 through 20. Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. Matthew 12, 36 and 37 says, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. How will God judge the words you have spoken? Be careful of what you say, because God is keeping a record.